My name is Jessie Ace. I'm part of a group of enabled warriors that you've probably never heard of. We're fighting back against our invisible illness and taking the dis out of disability. We don't give sympathy to our symptoms. They enable us to be the warrior that we are. If you asked doctors and nurses, they'd say what we're doing is impossible. But pushing the limits of our conditions is something that we have to break through every single day. So we push the limits. We are mentally strong. And we can do anything. The question is, how far can we push those limits? This podcast will give you the answers. I'm Jessie Ace, and this is the Disabled to Enable podcast. Enabled Warriors on our show today is an actual Iron Man. Seriously, Warriors, this is an interview that's not for the faint-hearted. Today's guest has completed not one, not two, not three, but seven officially and started eight Iron Man challenges. Like eight Iron Man. Oh my gosh. These Iron Man challenges are not for the faint-hearted and it takes a very specific diet, exercise and mindset plan to be able to have the physical and mental strength to be able to just fight through to achieve this goal. It is incredible. So this next guest also has written uh, two books and is an inspirational speaker around the world. He overcame his MS all the way from Ireland, Enabled Warriors. Please help me in welcoming the amazing Connor Devine, everybody. Woo! Hey. <laughs> hey, that was really good. Thank you for that. Um, Thank no, you. I'm, 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 delighted, I'm delighted that you've invited me on. So, no, <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure That's... to have you with us. Seriously, That's good. No problem. I'm delighted to be on. <laughs> so, welcome to the show. Um, let's let's get straight in by discussing your initial diagnosis. So, you were formally diagnosed in 2007. Is that right? Yes. Um, a year after having your first attack in Mauritius when you were on holiday. Can you tell us a little bit more about that moment and when you were finally diagnosed with MS? Like what happened? How did you feel about it? Let's, let's go into that. Yeah, so look, I'm 42 um, speaking to you tonight. I um, had my first attack at 27. So li- leading up to that, I mean, I, I lived a fairly, fairly good life. I was very fortunate, um, brought up in a, in a good loving home and I was really sporty and I was very good at sport right up through um, my life and I think I think actually the characteristics that I got in the sporting field and arena helped me whenever I started to get sick and deal with all that but anyway um, I suppose like a lot of people who get MS it, it strikes you in your prime and I was a director in a property company at the time and I was doing relatively well in terms of the business that I was in and I was feeling good and I was 27 at that time and I mean, just I just felt that I was in my prime, was on holiday in Mauritius and woke up the first day and my body started to um, not work properly. And what really happened was I had pins and needles in my arm, which traveled over the next few days right throughout my body. So um, I've heard this, so many people have, you know, MS starts with, that kind of thing. So anyway, I, I went to, it was 13 years ago um, that this happened and it, it seems so long ago, but actually also feels like yesterday. And I can remember most of those days, to be honest, in the last 13 years, because it's been, I mean, it's been a hell of a journey. Um, but yeah, I went to hospital and I got scanned and all the, all of the tests came back clear. I had some inflammation in my neck. Um, Got home from Mauritius early, so the holiday obviously was wrecked and I was really, started to feel really rough. And for the next 12 months, I would have spent a lot of time in and out of hospital getting scanned. I was really ill. At that time, probably my main problems at that time, I had huge anxiety, um, panic attacks, because I actually thought I was dying. I had numbness everywhere, um, Lermides pain in my chest, and my knees, and my head, I had a pressure in my head. Um, I had this problem with my throat as if it was closing over and just I think I read somewhere there's over 50 different symptoms for MS and I felt at that time I had over 20 of them and I just to be honest I was I was in free fall um, this awful fear of dying just felt really unwell every day so um, not a nice place to be 12 months nearly to the day that the first symptoms arrived in my body I was diagnosed with MS off the back of um, some MRI scans which showed lesions in the back of my brain and the symptoms that I was presenting. Interestingly, I didn't get a lumbar puncture. Um, mm-hmm. And we might come on to that 
in this conversation because um, I had my first lumbar puncture actually only in February of this year. And I've seen oh, wow. So, um, no, look, Jesse, it was, it was an absolute nightmare um, from 2000. I mean, if, you, if any of your listeners Google me or look me up, you'll see this very fit, uh, lean, healthy, positive guy. Um, and that's great because I want to really be a beacon of hope, a sign, signpost for hope and healing and recovery because I couldn't find anybody in the UK or Ireland or Europe um, who could inspire me or motivate me around 2007. There wasn't anyone that didn't exist. There wasn't anybody out there with anything positive to say about MS mm. around about that time. And um, so don't be fooled if you, if you check me out now. Um, I went through hell um, from 2006 actually to about 2010-11. It was a difficult four to five years. Um, all of those symptoms more or less were with me all of the time. I was, I was on Copaxin at the time, um, every day just injecting, was regular visitor to my neurologist. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, I, I wrote in my first book, I was clinically depressed. I just didn't know how I was going to pay a mortgage. I was going to, you know, I've, I've, I, I was married at that time and sub subsequently got divorced. Um, and, you know, all of the stress that comes with any kind of trauma and certainly an illness like multiple sclerosis just... I mean, it's just it's a dream stealer. It takes everything from me and then it takes your health. And, you know, what are you going to do? So for me, it was just a horrendous time. And I actually didn't really start to come out of that um, situation until I found someone who gave me huge hope in life. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about this a little bit of, before we got on, but the person for me was Montel Williams. Um, I found him on, on the internet and I read his books and I seen his website, and I was going, you know, Jesus, you know, this guy here, he looks the part, he's training in the gym, he's smiling. I mean, I hadn't smiled in years. Like, I'm, I would consider myself, I, I like, you know, have good fun and the banter and stuff, and all of that just goes, like, once you're not feeling well. But here was this chap who had MS. He was, he was doing, you know, interviews. He, he had a media company. He was successful. He was happy. He was training. And I just couldn't believe it. So that turned a spark on for me. And once, obviously, it's like all of these things, once I found one person, I found another and another and another. Mm. And I think consciously then and subconsciously, I decided then at that point in time that I was going to fight back against this illness to try and get my life back, my body back and my mind back. And mm. that was probably around about 2011 was when I ran my first marathon. Um, and I ran that for Action MS, a local charity. And so for, for the last eight years, um, so I've, I've had MS for 13, but for the last eight years, I have been on this mental trailblazing journey of exploration and healing and recovery and hell, I suppose, and back so many times. And like, thankfully, in the last, you know, two years, since we'll get into this, I, I stopped my medication in 2016 and I went plant-based and I, I took the whole lifestyle approach on board to try and, number one, stop the illness and then number two, do what they tell you is not possible, which is is reverse um, the damage that has been done in your body. And mm. it's interesting because I, I have, I'm very fortunate. I have spoken uh, at a number of events between 2010 and 14. Um, around Barcelona and Brussels and Copenhagen for a big pharmaceutical company, Teva. And I got, I was in conversations with some of the leading neurologists and stuff. So I, I've, I've been very fortunate, Jesse, in that I've, I've been part of discussions um, around this, this subject. Mm -hmm. And these guys are conventionally trained and, and people are quick to tell you that something is not possible. Um, if there's one thing that you can take from my own journey and story, I mean, once people check me out, I mean, integrity is everything for me. I'm not interested in people who bullshit and tell lies and try and build this some sort of uh, surreal thing that maybe you're not. That's not what I'm about. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the big, uh, we, we did chat about this before we got live, but, you know, I'm talking to some people at the moment. I think all of us, what we really want in life is the truth. Um, and from an MS perspective, I'm really motivated and inspired and passionate about trying to share as much of what I have experienced in my short time 
with the illness because I think from a patient's perspective, it's nearly impossible to get the proper advice. It seriously is. And you're so right there. And I think, um, I, th- I think it's a really, it's a really difficult thing. I think everybody's kind of in a really difficult position. You may agree or disagree with me. Um, but I think when money is involved and these big pharmaceutical companies are making a lot of money, I think it gets very easy to hide the truth, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So yeah, it gets no, easier to hide the fact that actually there could be a better way than the medications that they're trying to, you know, make money out of. Well, I th- look, I think, I think there's a fundamental problem in medical school. Um, I was fortunate enough to be asked to speak in a hospital about three months ago to believe, when you hear this, the Irish Plant Based Doctors Association. Wow, uh, I didn't know that existed. <laughs> Yeah, there's, a, there's a, actually a doc, there's, there's the UK plant-based, um, Gemma Newman, you may have seen, she's a plant-based doctor. Yeah. Uh, and Shireen K- Kasim, the cancer doctor. And they contacted me and said, look, would you go and speak at this event? And I said, well, who's all going? And she says, well, there'd be 80 GPs there and 40 other medical people. So it was a, it was a room full of medical people mm. who had all transitioned in their own philosophies in life to believe that lifestyle medicine was and, and, and food was a way to heal and recover. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's fascinating. I mean, two or three percent of medical school is focuses on nutrition. So we are creating thousands, hundreds and thousands of conventional doctors who know only one thing, which is which is conventional medicine. And yeah. there lies the problem. Mm-hmm. It's not to run. I mean, I think the doctor of tomorrow, the doctors of tomorrow and the neurologists of tomorrow are going to be those brave people who put their head above the parapet, like Dr. Rangan Chattery, who is a UK-based doctor who wrote the uh, Four Pillars, not to do a, a plug. <laughs> so, um, I mean, for me, uh, people like him who are embracing conventional medicine but, but are, are basically pushing lifestyle as a way to manage disease. Yeah, and definitely. It's people like him who are who are really going to be uh, leading, leading the chase in medicine over the next 50 to 100 years. It's already started all over, all over the States. Um, mm. Because I'm, I'm definitely not on this podcast, and I, I'm, not, um, I'm not saying to people that you have to stop medication, and I, I'm not interested in running down conventional medicine. That's not what I'm about. No. What I'm trying to do is talk from experience in terms of my own recovery, and for me personally, it was only when I stopped my MS medication and went on a plant-based diet combined with exercise that my improvements start to uh, speed up mm-hmm. and my symptoms started to fall away. And over the last three years, I mean, my personal experience, I'm not saying everybody will experience it, but my personal experience has been amazing. Mm. Um, Who was... Connor before the diagnosis and who is he now like what has changed in you during that transition process would you say oh that's a good question um well I would say that I'm a totally different person now um in every way um up until the illness at 28 I was probably someone who always wanted to do well in life so I I I didn't come from uh just a very normal ordinary background we didn't have lots of money but we weren't like totally skint but I had always this real internal ambition to do really well for myself um I think what one of the one of the tricks in life one of the one I think one of the things that I would encourage people to do I speak at schools at the moment I, I'm speaking to about 2,000 kids before Christmas to try and share a, a message of hope and what I say to the kids is I think it's really important in life to become self-reliant Mm. Um, and for me thankfully now I don't depend on anybody for anything and that's so empowering and I think whenever before I get sick um, it's not that I wasn't dependent on people or I never really thought about that but you asked me the direct question I think I was full of life and full of ambition I was full of hope I was um, fit I was athletic I was playing football I was happy um, I had a good job, which I worked hard for. I was I became a director in that company. And then I got sick. And then all of that, which I've just said, turned into darkness mm. and, and pain and 
trauma and a sense of just hopelessness, right? And that went on for a long time, mm -hmm. for years. And, you know, it was, as I said in the earlier question, it was only whenever I started to feel that there was some hope out there um, that things started to change for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you asked me then the question, so what's the difference between that person before the diagnosis and then now? So the person that's talking tonight is someone who has come through all that tremendous trauma and pain and adversity. And I think um, I've immersed throughout that journey um, this whole topic of personal development, um, of self-discovery, um, which is included then my personal journey of, of healing, which is, so like, it's, I'm just a completely different person now, like to the one I was. Mm. Uh, I've got two young children who, you know, I'm a single dad of two young children. I've got my own business now. Um, I didn't have my own business then. Um, and I'm very, very goal oriented. I've got my life back on my, my life is, is now on a, on a positive trajectory. My health is thank God amazing at the moment. Um, and, and I just know that, you know, I'm 42 now. I'm very goal oriented. I have my 12 month goals, my three year goals, my five year goals. So, I mean, it's just, it's just amazing, you know, Jesse, how all of our lives can, can turn for the good because I think in society today, um, yes, on social media, everybody looks great and everybody's happy and sharing positive stuff and you don't see the negative stuff and the crying and all the rest. Mm -hmm. But I know, for me, I, I, in my business, I see about 50 different people every week. So I'm, I'm seeing, you know, 200 people a month, two and a half thousand people a year. And I, I am very fortunate that I think I have a real sense of where society is. Um, I'm not saying I'm a moral compass on all this and I'm a great human being, but what I do know is that there's an awful lot of sickness out there. There's an awful lot of pain and trauma out there. Um, and there's an awful lot which, 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 which people can't deal with. Um, and yes, there's lots of MS, but there's lots of other illnesses like addiction is, is destroying society. And I've had huge personal experience with, with addiction and then people self-medicating. And so I just have a real sense of perspective, I think now is, is probably what, what I'm trying to get to. And I know what's important to me. Um, I'm, I'm hugely disciplined in terms of how I lead my life. And, and my number one goal in life is, is to reach some form of contentment. Um, health is probably in the round number two, because mm -hmm. if I'm not healthy, um, I'm no good to anyone, mostly my children. Exactly. Yeah myself and then probably number three is my children so they're gonna to have to come in under number they'll not be happy about ranking and number three. <laughs> it's just I, I just uh i'm just really grateful as well it's important to say that i have i just feel as if i've got a real chance now to go on and realize my own potential and and i'm really passionate about that that's amazing yeah I mean, you've done so much since, since you've been diagnosed. I mean, for everybody listening, can you just go into briefly, like, uh, what, a, what an Ironman challenge really consists of? Because when I was reading your book, Iron Mind, it was just, I was reading it and I just thought, oh my gosh, like, how can anybody do that? That's insane. <laughs> In the nicest possible way, you are insane, yeah. Connor, seriously. <laughs> you know yeah, look, I, I really appreciate it, but I think... Well, an Ironman is probably recognized as one of the toughest endurance races that you can do. Um, and I, I never set out like in 2011, like all I wanted to do was run one marathon. And because and, I, I thought that number one, if I could run a marathon, first of all, MS patients aren't supposed to be running marathons. Like you're not supposed to be doing that. You can't do it. You'll fall, it won't work. You're too much pain. You'll, your symptoms will get worse. You know, it's all that stuff. Anyway. <laughs> it's just not true. And anyway, once I, I ran the marathon, number one for myself, for self-confidence to, to actually get some hope back in my own life. And then number two was to try and inspire people. Because I knew that if I, could, if I could run this, then so many people would get some hope from that. So that, like that, that was the starting point of my endurance sort of career in the last five years. So I went on to run 10 marathons. Um, and I didn't really enjoy any of them, you know, running. <laughs> you know like it's not something that you really enjoy like it's quite tough marathon running you know it's it's long and it's hard and the training's hard but mm. I mean through pain comes growth and I think 
what I say to people is keep doing stuff that you don't want to do. Mm. Um, you know, and I think there's, that's, that's, that's medicine in itself. It's self-discipline. It's becoming self-reliant. All these things that I'm going to start repeating myself now to get the message home. You know, if you want to improve, you have to change. Like, you have to be the change. You have to do the work. And, you know, I'm, I'm just saying to anybody listening to me tonight or, or in the weeks ahead, you know, no matter, no matter what it is you're trying to beat in life or no matter what you're trying to get to in life, like, you have to do the work. Mm. It's not it be it get your health back, be successful in business, have a really good relationship, have good friends. Like it takes maximum effort. Like you have to nearly go all in and all this stuff. And so from the marathons then I, I thought it would be really cool if, if someone from it with MS could do a triathlon, which is a swim, the bike and the run, because that would be great for me because you know, at triathlon, I always thought, well, I can, I couldn't swim at the time. And I thought it would be a real challenge for me to learn to swim. So I've done a bunch of triathlons and then the Ironman is really the longest triathlon. So it's 146 miles in total. It's about a two and a half mile swim, 112 mile cycle and a marathon all in one day, all together. And my big inspiration for that was I'm, I'm a big, uh, I'm very passionate about people setting big goals. And in 2014 at Christmas, I normally do my annual goals for the year ahead. And I said, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an Ironman <laughs> in, in September. And I'm going to train for the next nine months and I'm just, I'm going to buy a book, how to train, because you can train to just finish. You mm -hmm. can train to finish in like a half decent time and then a really good time. So all I wanted to do was finish alive. And like that might sound funny, but 50 people have actually died doing the Ironman. Like it's not, it's, oh, it's, crazy. it's not, it's not something you take on lightly. And to be honest, like I, I was really frightened about that. And most people, unfortunately, take kind of heart attacks in the water and stuff. So oh, look, it's not, it's not something I'm advocating on this podcast either, but for me anyway, I, I did the Ironman. I couldn't find anyone in the world. This is where I wanted to get to. I couldn't find anyone in the world with MS who had done an Ironman. And I said, if I could do that, that would be amazing. And then I'm going to write a book about it because I already wrote a book in 2013, my MS story, Attitude is Everything. And the feedback on that was really good. It was, it helped me heal. It was part of my own journey of, of, of sharing. Mm. And I started to get more confident. And people started to say, God, that's good. I'm doing this. It's helping me. And then that led on to the, the, the triathlons, the Ironmans, and then the new book, which has been really good. I'm really proud of it. And it's just been ongoing from that, Jesse. So I, I just, I suppose I never, I never lie down. Like I, I just keep going every day. I have, I have to keep turning up. That's, that's just the way it is. I think the good, the good thing about living in, in, in life today is that um, if, if this was the 1950s, for example, um, you have no connectivity with people. You don't understand what's going on. I mean, it would have been Absolutely. a really troubling time to be ill. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a bit easier now because there's people like us and there's there's podcasts and there's you just go online and, you know, who's living well with MS? Ironman MS, me, right? You know, there's it's everywhere. So, <laughs> and to be honest, like most MS patients that I've ever met, um, I mean, they're all characters like they're all, they all got their own story and they're so resi they're really resilient and mm -hmm. i haven't met any you know pushovers yet like they've got this fight in them and you know i'm very conscious that sometimes um my story if i told it the wrong way could be very overpowering and overwhelming and could turn people off and hopefully i don't come across like that because what i'm saying to people is you don't have to do a marathon or an ironman like the point is you have to figure out for me you have to, if you, if you want to fight back that's the first that's the first thing you have to want to do it some people don't want to get better and that's okay that's a personal yeah. thing and that's okay but most people that I've ever met they want to get healthier they want to get better they want to get stronger and that's great so that's the starting point then you have to take massive massive action end of story yeah there's, there's no other way around it and <laughs> you know it just takes time so you have to be patient with yourself this is what I was saying you know, if you look at me tonight and online, I'm, I'm like an athlete, but it wasn't always like this. In 2006, 7, 8, and 9, I struggled to do shopping in Tesco's. I had real balance problems. I cried a lot. I had lots of pain. I didn't leave my house for a year, the first year. So, like, it's okay. You know, the, it, the point is, I think it really starts with wanting to get better. If you really that is want a major better, thing. Mm. Yeah, if you really want to get better, then... I'm telling you, you have a serious chance of improving. Like that's, I'm, 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 I'm totally convinced that that's the case. Unfortunately, some people 
don't want to get better. I haven't met a lot of those people. But it all starts with you have to want. It's the same with an Ironman. If you want to do an Ironman, you will do an Ironman. I mean, I could, I could point you to people who have one leg and have lots of reasons why they can't do marathons and Ironmans and triathlons and stuff. I mean, people who inspire me, like Mark Pollock, who's blind and in a wheelchair, who's, who's done the North Pole. Oh, there's, they're everywhere. So, but it all starts, Jesse, with you have to want to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Better, mm. so. Could not agree more. So there was something in one of your blogs that really interested me. And that is, that's actually when you said that one of the reasons that you fell in love with the Ironman event was because um, so many things can go wrong on the day. Now, I find that really funny because it seems quite counterintuitive. <laughs> and like, for me as an MSA, I kind of, I like it when things go meticulously to plan. So it, it was kind of like, I, I couldn't quite get my head around that. So, so you like things that don't quite go right on the day? <laughs> Tell us more, seriously. <laughs> let, let, me, let me, let me, let me, let me let you into my brain for a second. You, just, <laughs> you may want to go in there. Um, so what I was trying to say, and, and what I meant by that was, <laughs> um, do you know, whenever, if you look at the Ironman, for example, there's, there's so many things that you have to, has to go right on the day. Um, the swim, the weather has to be right for the swim. Like, for example, in the, my last Ironman that I had, I, 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 I pulled out of after 100 miles with an injury on the bike, the swim was cancelled because the weather was torrential rain and it was too dangerous. So for, for an Iron, the reason why I love the Ironman thing is, you know, the weather has to be right, the bike has to be right, you know, the chain could snap, your mm -hmm. gears could snap, you could fall off the bike, you could get knocked off the bike, you know, you're, you're, you're out on the race course for 16 hours, Jesse, like, so you have to be eaten, so your food and nutrition is massive. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get nutrition right, then you'll have stomach problems and then you might have to stop. You could get dehydrated, um, and then you run, obviously. So there's so many things so that can go wrong. So if, you, if, you, if you're still with me, once you finish the Ironman, <laughs> the sense of achievement that you've actually overcame all ah, of that stuff. That makes sense. It's absolutely sensational. Yeah. And to be honest, like, it's just like life. So every day, you know, we've got all these things, what, what you want to do. And if you achieve them at the end of the day or the end of the week or the end of the month, or say you spot someone who you would like to go out with them in their relationship and eventually you chip away and then you get like, we all, it's that sense of achievement. And in particular with the Ironman race, because it's so difficult and so many things can go wrong. Mm. I love it. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, that keeps drawing me back in and I love the okay. challenge and I love the adversity. So that's what I was trying to say. Oh, I love that. That makes total sense to me now. That makes yeah. total sense. <laughs> I'm Because I'm one of those people where I just like, everything has to be meticulously to plan. Like, I don't like it when things start to go wrong and, and stuff like that. No, but yeah, no. it's amazing. Can you tell us a little bit um, more about your diet at all? Because I'm really intrigued. So, so you make fruit and veg. How do you make fruit and veg interesting enough to have like every day, like day in, day out? Yeah, so it's, it, it's amazing. It, the food thing's really interesting and it's really complicated. It's nearly political. Like people are so <laughs> obsessed and really into the food. And what I try to do then is I try and I think there's nothing worse than somebody, anyone pontificating around what you should and shouldn't be eating. Mm. Because we live in a society where one of the only things we sort of really enjoy is our food, right? And then comes along Connor to say, well, you can't eat meat or dinner. <laughs> you're, 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 you're loads of fun. So whenever... One of the things I found out in the last 13 years is that most diseases and illnesses are fueled by inflammation. Cancer, depression, MS, all of these things are fueled by inflammation, right? Dead mm -hmm. easy. So what's the most anti-inflammatory diet you can eat? A plant-based diet, right? It mm -hmm. reduces inflammation. MS patients need to reduce infl inflammation. Then I came across the work of Dr. Swank, who to be fair, is rubbished by a lot of current medical people. They don't really give no. his 30 year trial much credit, right? Interesting. However, I am fascinated by Dr. Uh, Swank and I have actually read some uh, really good articles which, which says he was an outstanding neurologist, um, good man. 
wanted to help people. And, and the swank diet showed, proved that those MS patients who reduced their saturated fat intake to less than 15 milligrams a day tend to have better outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's what that clinical trial done, right? Mm -hmm. so, so whenever you look at what you're eating, so what, what's, what's uh, high in saturated fat, meat and dairy products? So for me, they had to go. So mm -hmm. that, that's how I arrived at a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. There's loads of other reasons why people go plant-based, and, and which is nearly like a vegan diet. A plant-based diet is like a healthy vegan diet because you can eat lots of crap on a vegan diet. You can eat chips all day and donuts. It doesn't work. So, so for me then, it made perfect sense because I like to break it down and make it someone who, you know, a child could understand it. So if, if you've stayed with me, you know, if you want to reduce inflammation in your body, then probably once you look at all the diets, a plant-based diet is a good one to go for. Mm -hmm. um, so then you ask a question, which I get, like my mum used to ask me this, but not anymore. She goes, if you don't eat, what do you eat? <laughs> this is some kind of lunatic that's dropped out of a spaceship, right? So um, everything apart from meat and dairy. So for example, tonight, I had pasta and chickpeas and broccoli and pesto and some bread. Sounds nice. Curries, I have chicken non carnies, I have stews, I have sips, I have salads, I have everything that anybody eats. I just don't eat meat or dairy. The challenge with society right now is we eat, most people accept that we need all of us to reduce our meat intake massively mm -hmm. because we used to all eat meat on a Sunday or most people ate meat on a Sunday. It was a bit of a treat. Now we're eating meat three times a day. Yeah. The whole thing's completely out of control. So that's yeah. addition to what I wanted to get into. But so I eat lots of stuff. I mean, um, actually how I feel every day is um, I bring, in the morning I get up and I have coffee in the morning, one cup of coffee. And then I would maybe have a slice of toast and maybe some avocado. And then I would bring a bag into my work. And in that bag would be oranges, bananas, almond nuts, and I would graze most of the day on that stuff. I train every lunchtime and I might have a bowl of soup and maybe a salad sandwich, not a lot. And then I would have some dinner at night with the kids and I mean, they're plant-based as well and they love it. And like, I think it's easier, Jesse, if you like to cook. Yeah. Uh, so I've always sort of liked to cook. It gets me away from the business day and all sorts of stuff. So no, look, I, I love cooking and I, I cook lots of things. So that's what I eat. Nice. So do you find that difficult when you, for example, get invited out to go for a meal or you get invited to somebody else's house to, to go and eat with them? Or how do you handle that situation? Because I think that's the hardest part of if you're, if you're going to follow any sort of diet, that, that is the hardest part is temptation. So, so not really, because nobody invites me anywhere. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Um, <laughs> that's the one uh, What's your next question? I'm only joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, of course I'm invited places. No, I, do you know what? There's loads of uh, vegan restaurants in Belfast at the moment. Um, yes. There's lots of options out there. Do you know what I've really, I have found so many people, everybody I meet say, are you still on a plant-based diet? How's that going for you? They're so interested in food. Like, you know, whenever I was growing up, I used to be like a BMX was a cool thing to be on. And now it's cool to go vegan. Now it's cool yeah, to go just... it, It's so in, like it's everywhere. Yeah. It's, well, like California 15 years ago, I mean, there's a vegan restaurant open in Belfast history. There's a juice bar opened last week. I mean, people, the, the really good thing about all of this movement is people are now interested in food. And so they should be because 40% of adults in the UK and 40% of children are obese. Heart mm -hmm. disease and diabetes is still the biggest killer across the world. And all of this illness is coming down to how we feel, what we put in our mouths. Yes. So it's a great discussion. So to be honest, the plant-based thing has really got so many people's attention about me because everybody's interested in the MS thing and then what you're, what do you mean? What, so what do you eat? What you don't yeah. eat? How does that work? So it, it actually dovetails really, really well. It's interesting. It is interesting. And especially on for like the, the training perspective as well, because you often hear like you need to, you need maximum amounts of protein and all of this rubbish and you're just like, do you, well, was, do you need that? <laughs> need lots of protein when you're training because it's the protein that helps the body repair and, and the amino acids and stuff but to be mm -hmm. honest like the whole thing is a myth because i 
I actually p- played semi-professional football and I have trained all my life. And I, I believed up until I was 39 that you could only get protein from chicken and turkey and meat products. Because the personal trainers used to say, you know, eat your turkey mm-hmm. and your chicken and get all the protein. And then I watched What the Health. And then I watched Forks Over Knives. And then I started following Dr. Colin Campbell and Esselton Caldwell and all of these guys in the States. Mm-hmm. And they, t- they actually told me the truth, which is all protein comes from plants. So the chicken and the cow have to eat the grain to get the protein to come to yeah. us. So all I do is cut out the middleman. I mean, it's totally mental that people are only finding this out now. <laughs> it's crazy. So, so it's crazy. If, you, if you follow that, which is the truth and factually true, then I'm getting more protein than most people because I'm eating plant food all the time. It's <laughs> mad. It is mental, actually, that people don't know this, but I'm sure so many people listening to this will, underst- will, will be shocked to find out that all protein comes from plants. You heard it here first, Enabled Warriors. <laughs> all protein comes from plants. That makes total sense, though, doesn't it? I mean, you know, the animals have to eat something. and uh, Yeah. Well, why, is, why does that not get taught in schools? It's ridiculous. It's mental, but it really no, is. but the, the good thing is all of this stuff is changing. And I just think so many people, everybody wants to get healthy now because mm-hmm. illness is so rife. I mean, it, we're, we're, it's just this whole cancer thing and, and, and autoimmune and um, aut- autism. And I mean, there's, there's a Dr. Zach Bush who I would encourage your listeners to, to look up, Z-A-C-K, Zach Bush. An incredible doctor. He's done two amazing podcasts with Rich Roll, who's another um, mentor of mine, someone who has inspired me. And he talks a lot about food, the food chain, and the impact that food has made in the last 25 years mm. on illness and disease. It's fascinating. So anybody who wants a bit of a steer in that, it's Dr. Zach Bush. Amazing. Go and check that out, Enabled Warriors, for sure. Definitely. Um, there's also Dr. Walls as well. I don't know if you've heard of Dr. Walls at all. Which so is- he has written a blog for me um, uh, on my website a few years ago. Um, Dr. Walls was one of the first people I seen around about 2016 who was using lifestyle medicine to treat her condition. She stopped all her drugs, mm-hmm. uh, she was deteriorating, and then she stopped the drugs and went on food that was complementary to brain health. Yeah. And then that stopped her decline. So yeah, she, she, I was in touch with her. I haven't been in touch with her in a couple of years. She's doing amazing stuff. Um, she's, she's, she's incredible. And her YouTube talk on minding your mitochondria is something that everybody needs to see as well. So, no, yeah. she's one of the ones that's really leading the change as well, which is great. Yeah, totally, totally. And I highly recommend going and watching... Uh, What's it called? Watching, watching your mitochondria. Finding your mitochondria. Finding your mitochondria. Oh, it's, yeah, it's so late at night. I'm not very good at this time of night, seriously. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, so, for someone who wants to get into improving their strength of mind and tackle something that maybe feels out of reach to them, what do you think would be the best kind of starting point? Where do you think they should go to find out that information? So, if anybody's listening to this tonight or in the weeks ahead and you're really 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 struggling i what i would say to you is if you can just always try and believe that things can get better that's the first thing if you just it doesn't matter if you if you if you just nearly believe that the things in your life can get better no matter what it is that's really annoying you ms your marriage your business if you can just believe right that things can get better that's number one after that Go find somebody who inspires you. Love and, that. And read about them. Find out what they have done. Mm-hmm. I've read hundreds of books in the last 13 years. I only started reading at 28. And at the moment, I'm reading about Abraham Lincoln, um, who was one of the most famous, uh, highly thought of presidents of the United States. And I knew nothing about Abraham Lincoln until I started writing this book. And then what did I start learning about this guy, Abraham Lincoln? He had so much trauma and pain in his life. And anybody that I have ever came across who is doing exceptionally well, is beating disease, who's winning at life, right? Doesn't matter what it is. Mm. They've all come through some kind of trauma or adversity. Yeah. So you're not, you're not alone. And it's true. And I think that's, sorry, I, I think that's uh, something that's really important to point out as well, is that when you have these experiences of trauma and you have... Um, 
I cut that bit out. <laughs> I've forgotten the word. When you have these experiences of trauma, it, it's, I think it's really just shifting your focus into another trajectory. And that's literally the point of it. It's to send you down a different path. It's to teach you something. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the problem is that we've all got different levels of coping mechanisms. And some of us are stronger than others. Um, mm. But um, I've came across the work of Dr. Gabor Mate, who, who works in the field of addiction and stuff. And he's an amazing guy. His work is amazing. And I just, I suppose where I'm at in my life at the moment, outside of my business world, Jesse, is that I'm really fascinated by this whole idea of trauma and how, how do we deal with trauma and pain. Mm. And I think, I think each and every one of us, all of us now around our age, um, has something that's causing us real problem. And how do we deal with that? How do you react to that? Mm. And what I say to the kids at school is, and it's a bit of a cliche, but it's not what happens to you in life that's important. It's how you react to what happens, which will determine your own trajectory in life. That's what and I say too. I <laughs> don't not think you'd be stealing my I came out of first. Well, I normally <laughs> say it's not the cards that you dealt with in life. It's how you play them that counts. Yeah, so... so and same, of, same principle. Same thing, but... <laughs> It's easy for someone like uh, Will Smith to say that whenever he's living in Malibu. Yeah. And <laughs> we're ordinary people. And it, it is true. But, you know, and what, so, so the, the two steps then is if you, if you can just believe that you can improve and then, you know, go and find someone who's doing it and find other people, then you have to take massive action. That's the key thing. Yes. Massive action. And then there's loads of other things after that. Which, which for me can be all wrapped up into personal development, which is reading, listening to podcasts, all that stuff. But, you know, yeah. we've got a real chance in, in the world at the moment because there's so many resources to help us. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. And um, I think my world changed when I started listening to the Miracle Morning, you know, the audio book, The Miracle Morning. Have you, have you read that at all? Mm -hmm. That is a really good one. And you will love that because um, so basically this guy was in a car crash, lost the feeling from his neck downwards. He was told that he would not last for like more than a year. He's had cancer twice. And he, he literally fought through all of that. He's now an international speaker. It created the Miracle Morning program. It's now a movement as well. It's just absolutely insane. It's uh, Hal Elrod. Okay, no, check that out. I'll check it out. No, but there's so <laughs> many people out there, and I, I, I just think that's that's the roadmap to to the starting blocks. Definitely, yeah, yeah. It's it's finding somewhere that you want to be and getting there. I think. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Are you ready for some super quick secrets enabled warriors? Oh, let's go. <laughs> You've been looking forward to this bit, aren't you? I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Enabled warriors. This is the part of the show where we find out a little bit more about the personality of our guest with some super quick secrets. Let's do this. Connor, are you ready? Yes. Firing at you. <laughs> What is the most inspiring book that you've ever read? And I know you've read a lot, so you're going to have to choose oh, one of them. I'll say Lance Armstrong's Not About the Bike. Oh, um, good choice. Whenever, whenever I was really struggling in 2008, I mean, I, I, was, I locked myself in the house for about two years. A friend of mine posted this book to me through the letterbox, and I reluctantly started to read it. That's whenever <laughs> I started to read. I hadn't read until that was the first book I started to actually read. And I was reading this book, and I know Lance Armstrong is a divisive character, but if you look at his health journey, I mean, that book is so powerful. Um, and that, that gave me massive hope. Like, so Lance Armstrong is not about the bike. Love that. Love that. I'm going to add that to my list, definitely. What would you say is your favorite comfort food nowadays? Um, kale. Spinach. Kale. <laughs> That's an interesting one. I like that. Grass. Um, Grass. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm joking, right? <laughs> so comfort food, I don't even know what that means, but I eat a lot of nuts. Okay. I don't, I don't cool. like the word comfort. <laughs> you don't like the word comfort? Not really. Nice. Okay. No worries. I like that. I, I, I eat a lot of, I, mean, I would eat nuts, um, almond nuts and stuff most days. I, I find them really good. They, zap your, they give you energy. There's, there's good fats in them. They're no. healthy. And it's... Um, I, I eat a lot of nuts, actually. Lovely. Do you bake them as well? Have you tried the, do you eat honey? <coughs> Sorry, have you eat, do you eat honey? Yeah, I eat some, uh, the, yes, I do eat the, what do you call it? There's like a vegan-y honey thing that you can get now, but it's like a syrupy thing, but yeah, I do. But no. I, don't, I don't cook, I haven't, haven't progressed to the cooking of nuts now. Okay. <laughs> 
I love it when they're baked in like honey and with a little bit of salt and stuff. It's like, oh, so good. Yeah. Anyway, what is the weirdest thing that you've ever done, do you think? A skydive in Australia about 20 years ago. Um, really? So, so many people come on here and they say skydive and I'm always like, why would you want to skydive? I don't get that. Well, we were, we were, we were skydiving on to a um, uh, beautiful beach in Northern Australia and I was 21 at the time and it was the thing to do, but I've, I've no interest in doing it again. It's a nightmare. It's <laughs> absolutely horrendous. Wow. Do you know a lot of people say that as well? <laughs> there's a lot of people say oh straight again let's go again but no i think they're telling lies um <laughs> it's it's a horrific experience <laughs> oh, gosh. i can't even imagine seriously uh <laughs> what is your favorite place that you've ever visited oh, um, mm. well i'll give you a few answers here so i get i feel amazing in forests um I, I run a lot, obviously, and whenever I'm in the forest on my own, running in nature, the trees, whatever the impact is with all the oxygen and the green and stuff, I just feel yeah. really symptom-free, amazing. It's just unbelievable. Um, and I need to probably get there more often. Um, I have traveled a lot. I mean, I love Australia. I love New York. Um, I'm just back from Antibes in France. I love, I love um, down around the south of France. Um, I actually love traveling. Um, and traveling for me has, I mean, I've, I've, it, it's been nearly the making of me. I've traveled to, around so many places and I like, I love people and communicating with people and people from other cultures and backgrounds and seeing how they live and fix things and all that. So I, 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 I've been fortunate enough where I've been to lots of places, including China and the, for the World Student Games in 2002. So, um, yeah, there's a few places that nice. I've really fond of. <laughs> That's incredible. I think that's like the most amazing thing about um, doing anything is, is traveling and experiencing different cultures. I think it's amazing. Yeah, it certainly is. Yeah. What would you say is the scariest thing that you've ever done? Oh, well, I, say, I think probably going off the medication for the MS. Yeah. It's pretty traumatic, yeah. Mm. Because you know it's it's not it's not an easy thing to do. It's not something that you would you would do in over months. Like I, I thought about it for two years. Like I, I had to research it strongly and I was really concerned about it because who knows, you know, it's just you just have to really go with your gut. And I think it mm. you know, I just I just got the power and the energy and conviction and strength to do it. So yeah, going going off the MS drugs was really difficult. Mm. for me this whole ms journey is easily the most difficult part of my life like but i mean it's it's ongoing it's part of me now and i mean it's also very empowering for me like i get an awful lot out of it now i do lots i've done a lot of this i've done you know i've done a lot of blogs i've done a lot of radio and tv work and stuff and to be honest with you what i'm probably going to do jesse in the next three years is exit out of my conventional business and build a big health business and well-being community that's really where i'm at yeah, um, sounds good. If you follow me on Instagram, I think you do, you can see what I'm up to there. And I'm just really inspired and motivated to be the change and create positive change. And it's, I think at the moment we talked about, you know, vegan is flavor of the month. It's a very cool thing at the minute. It's very in. I think there's nothing more in at the moment than health. This oh, the, health the health industry at the minute is booming, the well-being sector, the community mm -hmm. that's out there. And I, I slot straight in there because um, I'm on a, an ongoing health journey and i really enjoy fitness and it's helping me so no i'm i'm really passionate about about that i'm i'm currently in the process of making um, a documentary hopefully in the next couple of months as well oh that's so cool that's so, so cool we'll keep you posted on that um, any plans to write any more books at all because I've, I've yeah. while we've been talking i've thought of three that you could write <laughs> Is that right? You're gonna to have to email me. You're gonna to have to keep in touch. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm actually gonna write a book in the next over the winter time. Um, nice. I have a lot of stuff in my mind that I just want to share, and I've had really good feedback from people. I mean, the first thing is you should never write a book about money, right? Because there's no money in making in writing books. That's the first thing, right? So, because, but w whenever I wrote my first book, I said if. if and I genuinely mean this, if my mum read it and goes, you know, that's really good. Because you can self-publish now, so it's not overly yeah, yeah. 
expensive to actually self-publish a book. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't overly bothered if people bought it or not because that wasn't my motivation, but it actually helped me heal and recover the first one. And the feedback, I actually got on Ireland's top television show with that book and we talked about that. And then I got hundreds of emails, wrote the second book. It's doing really well, actually, and I don't really market it. I probably should. So I love to write. You know, I like writing. I like blogging. I, I need to do more of this stuff. But my businesses are taking up most of my time at the moment. So mm. I'm really excited about actually getting out of that space and then trying to come into this space more often to create Yeah, this. it'd be good. I think it, it really would be like the making. I really do. So, Connor, where can other warriors find out more about you and what you do? Right, best place is I'm revamping my website at the moment. It's connordivine.com. But... You'll probably get the real me, and I'll explain that on Instagram. That's where I share my journey of health and well-being. Um, on LinkedIn, it's the business me. It's the serious, boring me. Um, and then on Twitter, I'm just, uh, I use it for news. So I'm on Facebook as well. So I'm, all, I'm on all the platforms, but most of your listeners will probably find my Instagram journey interesting. Awesome. So that's kind of like a, a day-to-day account type thing. Yeah, it's very active. Um, nice. I keep keep that up it's good I, I i share all sorts of stuff on the bio and so yeah i'm enjoying instagram i'm only on it about a year so it's it's it's, it's a nice platform yeah me too i've only just like learned how to use it to be honest <laughs> which is really funny but yeah it's good there's a lot of uh, a lot of scope in that awesome thank you so so much for joining us today connor it's been amazing we've learned so so much from you and i think there are lessons in there that we can all learn from and things that we can take forward into our own lives. So thank you so much again for joining us. And uh, remember, warriors, stay enabled. See you later, Connor. Bye. See you later. Thank you. If you want to fight back against your invisible illness and help take the dis out of disability, then join the tribe on Facebook, facebook.com slash enabledwarriors. If you love this podcast, click that subscribe button and never miss another episode. And remember, warriors, stay enabled.